not seeing the pain associated with it, and then later having the pain associated with it, and not seeing that that was because of the, the addiction to the pleasure. And they've separated the inseparables and divided the indivisibles and labeled the unlabelables and named the ineffables and polarized the impolarizables. And as a result of it, they disempowered themselves. I tell people that are beating themselves up, I keep beating myself up. And I go, well, quit building yourself up. As long as you're addicted to building yourself up, you're going to beat yourself up because you can't have pride without shame. You have a built-in thermostat, a psychostat to make sure that you're authentic. And if you puff yourself up, you're going to beat yourself up to get yourself back in balance. But the reason why you're puffing yourself up is because you're in what is called an injected value from some authority and you're trying to abide by it. And when you think you're doing it, you feel proud. And when you think you're not, you feel shamed. And so, and, and anytime you set up a fantasy about how your life's supposed to be, that you're supposed to live in somebody else's values, you're supposed to be one-sided, which is an, another injected value, or others are supposed to live inside your values, or they're supposed to be one-sided, all these end up beating them up if you're expecting them to do something that's not real, or if you beat yourself up if you expect yourself to not do something real. But the number one reason why people beat themselves up is very simple. They subordinate to the ideologies and idealisms of other people that they think have a better life than them. And the re reality is they don't. They have a different life than them. Uh, believe it or not, uh, I was watching a video on Steve Tyler. I have had the opportunity to meet Liv Tyler and Royston, her, her former husband, and interact with them and work with them. And, and um, Steve was on the phone one night when I was driving around with him. And so I got to hear Steve and talk briefly to him. But Steve is a, a unique guy, right? And he's a superstar with Aerosmith and he's an amazing singer and he's got some amazing hits that's, you know, rocked the world as they say. <clears throat> but he also had drug um, dealings and he had um, health issues and it, everybody's got something, a pain and a pleasure. The individual that can incorporate those and embrace both of them equally has the most <clears throat> use stress, <clears throat> most resilience and adaptability. The person that can't and keeps looking for a one-sided world is going to have distress. So as long as we're living in our amygdala, looking for a, a pleasure and trying to avoid a pain and looking for hedonistic pursuits, uh, I've seen people that go off on drugs looking for a quick fix and they pay a major prize. <clears throat> and when they do, they, they, think, they think they can separate them. See, the, the problem, why I put the breakthrough experience, not the only reason, but one of the reasons, is because I saw people having an experience that they thought was pleasure not seeing the pain associated with it, and then later having the pain associated with it, and not seeing that that was because of the, the addiction to the pleasure. And they've separated the inseparables and divided the indivisibles and labeled the unlabelables and named the ineffables and polarized the impolarizables. And as a result of it, they disempowered themselves <clears throat> because they became impulsive towards this and instinctual from that. You know, one of the biggest ones of those that I've seen is money. The, the banks, want to get you into a house. So you buy a house. And pardon me for going off on this. I'm going to go off on a tangent, but I want to make a point here. You buy a house, a quarter of your house is a garage that you put something you're paying a bill on that you're paying interest on that's depreciating, got a car that's depreciating in a garage that's overpriced to store stuff that's depreciating, to put stuff in there that you build up that's accumulates, you can't even get your car in there that's also depreciating, that's stored, and you're paying sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars for something of storage of junk that's depreciating. And people just parrot what people tell them, they'll go buy a house, but then they don't even think about what they're doing with their money. And then they, they pay a mortgage that means, mortgage. the term mortgage means pledge unto death, which is an interesting thing to, to, to put in your head. You're pledging unto death. You're gonna be paying that until you die, basically. And then you're going to pay fractional reserve. You're going to depreciate your money. Then you're going to pay um, on, a, on a gambling casino of a bank because there's not really any money in a bank. It's just a gambling casino that you borrowed from. Then you do the house that way. Then you do a credit card, which is ridiculously high price. And then you don't, you buy the credit card. You have a pleasure when you buy, and then you don't get the pain for weeks later. And you don't associate those. If you had to pay cash, you'd be associated in pain and pleasure when you pay for what you do. And you'd be more cautious about what you buy. But all of those things separate pleasure and pain. You buy the house, you get the house, but now you got 30 years of payments. That's the pain. And then you're depreciating, you're buying depreciations, you're not even realizing it's going, you're going backwards. 
So most people don't think, they don't have a value on that. They put themselves under slavery. They don't see the relationship between pleasure and pain and they strive for the immediate gratification of pleasure because they're unfulfilled. They're not doing something that's love. And when you don't do something you love doing that's fulfilling, you try to fill your life with consumerism. Consumerism is a compensation for unfulfilled highest values. I'd rather build my own brand that other people consume than be sitting there spending all my life consuming stuff and then filling it up with something that's depreciating and paying banks and mortgages and credit cards and, and debt slavery. And that's exactly what the banking system wanted you to do. And you didn't even know that you're injecting the values of a banking in, in a goal that started back in the turn of the last century. And it was purely intended to make create a suburbial de de uh, debt system, slavery for people. And people don't even think about it. They just go about their business, not even knowing they're injecting the ideals of other people in their life and trying to live the good life. And they don't even realize what they're doing. Instead of stopping and looking, what do you want to do with your life? How do you want, to, how do you want it to look? And if you compare yourself to other people, you're going to have those things happen. But if you start prioritizing your life and start living really about what it, what it is and ask, how do I get paid to do what I love and get paid to go through life instead of how can I afford life? How do I get handsomely paid for my life the way I want? What is it I would love to do and how do I get handsomely paid is a different life than how can I afford to do this and how can I get out of my debt? It's insanity, but I see it. I see it every day. <clears throat> I'm amazed at how many, since the coronavirus, how many very wealthy looking homes have got foreclosure signs and sales signs on it because they've been living on the edge and everybody's driving by and go, whoa, look how rich they are. They're in debt. They don't even have anything. It just looks like it's a big facade. It's a big smoke screen. You want to you want to find out what you love to do. You need to prioritize what you do. You need to make sure you do something that serves people. You need to get paid to do that. And you need to live by what's really valuable. If you want to value yourself and you want others to value you, and then you want to manage your friggin' money wisely so it's working for you, and not so you're not a slave to it. And then you get ahead and build momentum, and then you exemplify what's possible to people. And you inspire people by what's possible and you start a chain reaction of an economic growth and a prosperous outcome instead of a consistent uh, survival mechanism. The people that are doing that, they're not concerned about crisis like Corona. They've got the cash reserves. They've got the dream. They're resilient. They're adaptable. They come up with new things and they're dedicated to serving people because they've made a habit of it. When that, when that happens, opportunities come to those people. Then they think, oh, those people have the lucky you know, no, it's not luck. It's preparation, meaning opportunity. It's preparing by educating yourself on the principles that stand the test of time and, and working. Them. Thank you for joining me for this presentation today. If you found value out of the presentation, please go below and please share your comments. We certainly appreciate that feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification icons. That way I can bring more content to you and share more to help you maximize your life. I look forward to our next presentation. Thank you so much for joining.